In China, the 6128 Note 9 Pro 5G itself was sold for 1699 yuan, which roughly converts to 18,500 rupees. So at pretty much the same price as the Redmi Note 9 Pro Max uh, is selling in India, Redmi has launched a much, much better phone in China. Right from the build, the design, to the internals, the refresh rate, the optics, the Note 9 Pro 5G seems to be an improvement, an uh, all-round improvement of the Max sold in India. So here's to hoping Redmi finds a way to get this to Indian shores. Be careful what you wish for. As cliched as that saying might be, it's perfectly fitting here. We have Xiaomi instead of Redmi bringing us the same damn phone under a different name. So what's the deal here? Let's find out. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech and let's get to it. Here we see the front of the box with just a couple of spec highlights, me branding to the top right and a picture of the back of the phone. This thankfully is devoid of any celebrities. A rather nice looking black box, plain and simple. Turning the box around, we have a bunch of spec highlights, 108 megapixel camera, 750G, 120Hz refresh, and the 4820mAh battery. Our review unit is a 8128 Pacific Sunrise variant. The color sounds nice, don't it? To the side, we have me branding, and we can see the price being scratched out, but we actually managed to see the price I mean, on box, on sticker. It says 24,000, which, hey, I don't know. Let's get to that in a bit. The other side, it's identical and the top is devoid of anything. Let's go ahead and slice the seals off and open up the box. We find a black sleeve that contains the literature that absolutely nobody reads. Oh wait, there is a soft silicone case included in the box. I don't know about you, but I always appreciate the inclusion of a case. I just wish it was transparent so you can see the Pacific sunrise through it. And we also have a sim ejector pin. Now we get to the Mi 10i. Taking the plastic off, this back, it really looks nice. Seems awfully familiar though, but the sunrise is beautiful. The gradient dual tone blue and orange with the aesthetically placed quad camera array and minimal branding, it seems well done. Back is made out of glass with a matte finish that surprisingly reflects light well. The color hues, they seem to shift as the light hits. Now let's turn it on, set it aside and see what else we get in the box. There's a 33 watt charger and a USB Type-C cable with red accents. With that done, let's talk more about the phone. So let's start with the built-in design, partly because that is what we usually do, partly because the build, the in-hand feel is quite good and hey, it also looks nice. You're seriously gonna go on as if this is a new phone? We've not seen this before, really? You know what, don't you dare. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be ignoring you. Okay, guys, uh, as much as I would like to pretend I haven't done this before, it wouldn't be fair to you guys to ask you to sit through all this again. So I'm gonna just uh, leave a card to my Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G video here. This is exactly that same phone. But let's talk about the differences first. And hey, we have the Mi logo instead of the Redmi logo. And that's pretty much it. So now let me just give you a gist of the features on this phone real quick. We have a beautiful 6.67-inch uh, Full HD Plus IPS LCD panel with a 120Hz refresh rate. You have the option to switch it to 60Hz to preserve battery, but sadly, we can't really do 90Hz. But like I said in that earlier video, you should probably leave it at 120Hz all the time, saying that there is a pretty robust 4820mAh battery. And top of that, you do get 33W flash charging, get the phone from 0 to 100 in under an hour. The placements are all regular uh, Xiaomi Redmi. The fingerprint scanner is good, no surprises there. The dual SIM hybrid slot is also present and accounted for. Now, cameras, the rear camera assembly houses the exact same sensor array, because this is the exact same damn phone. So, uh, again, a quick refresher we have the second gen Samsung HMX 108 megapixel f1.8 primary, 8 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide secondary. 2 megapixel macro and depth sensors to make up the numbers as always. The primary camera's performance is excellent, the colors are good, yada yada yada, you know how it goes. Please note that you have to manually turn on the 108 megapixel option because by default it shoots 12 megapixels. Now all the same bells and whistles that we saw earlier like the ability to shoot pro raw and the scene deduction to bump up uh, saturation make the pictures a little more attractive they're all included here the 16 megapixel selfie camera also seems pretty serviceable on the software front the Mi 10i runs on Android 10 with MIUI 12 on top the feature set remains the same 
You can amplify your meat and eye and make it have a control center by which you can pull down by swapping on the right. Notification shade from the top left. However, the difference here is the fact that you have Google Play services pre-installed. We still have oodles of bloatware baked in, but hey, you knew what you were getting into if you go MIUI, right? That said, it doesn't really affect the performance. It's still snappy. We didn't find any lag or stutters with day-to-day -day use. The 750G kept chugging along quite smoothly. Uh, speaking of smoothly, the 120Hz refresh rate is pretty dope. Here's to hoping all phones in 2021 have 120Hz or at least 90Hz displays. You know who I'm talking it about. It doesn't matter who you're talking about. Hitting mute again. I wish all you guys pause this video, hit that like and subscribe button as recognition of my hard work shooting videos despite being crazy and hearing voices in my head. I went there. Now jokes apart, there is possibly another difference from the Redmi Note uh, 9 Pro 5G pricing. At this point, we don't know what the official pricing is, we know the sticker pricing is probably 24,000. The Redmi Note 9 Pro 5G, it starts at 1699 yuan, that's about 18,500. So I'm expecting the actual price to be somewhere in between. Anyway, as soon as the price drops, I will pin it in a comment down below, so do check that space. So the bottom line, I am a little bummed out that the first Mi Phone for 2021 is a rebrand. But at the same time, this being a rebrand of a very solid phone, that fact doesn't change, does it? So anyway, I'll have more to say in our full review. For now, it is time for me to bid you adieu. Let me know what you think about this phone and like, comment, share, subscribe, all those things. Thanks a lot for your time. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.